Hi, this is another edition of Weekly News Watch, our collaboration with the Cecil Wig, featuring uh, the Wig's reporter, Matt Hubbard. Um, good afternoon, Matt. Um, hey, welcome. thanks for having me. Uh, so yes, there's a lot going on and, uh, and uh, we inch ever closer to uh, budget season, but... Uh, there are other things going on too. So uh, what do you got? Yeah, so right now, um, the WIG is working on you know a big report breaking down how salaries work within the school system as well as um, the elected officials and all other officials, senior ranking and everybody else uh, within the government. Um, you know, so coincidentally, so the sheriff of Cecil County, he is getting a one a ten thousand dollar raise so he's going to be making not 117 thousand a year anymore he's going to be making 127 thousand um so far according to my research this is the first raise that he's gotten since the hornberger administration so you know um he's not making the most out of anybody in government by any means but you know it's relatively overdue uh, uh the council says and it's through a resolution so they're going to vote on that um i think the next coming meeting and then um also there's a bill that is Bill 03 2023. And that basically takes 108 acres in Elkton on Blair Shore Road and it uh, makes it an agricultural preservation district, which means the land cannot be developed. Um, with all the development news going on recently, you know, this is great to hear for a lot of residents. A lot of people like Cecil County remaining rural. Um, this 108 acres will add on to an existing 500, um, you know, preserved acres. Basically, there's another district there and preserved land by the state. So it's going to be 800 plus acres overall that is preserved land that cannot be developed in Elkton. So that's great to hear. Um, and then that, another does, big thing. Does that include waterfront? As waterfront? Well? Um, I'm not necessarily sure. I know that there is a farm on the land um, and that's about all a uh, farm and a few greenhouses. That's all that I know for now. Hmm. But um and then also there's, um, you know, the whole lease agreement with Enterprise that the government has. Um, so they lease all of their cars out of Enterprise rather than buy them um, because it's cheaper to lease a vehicle and then get a brand new one. Well, that's not the case. Um, there's the supply chain shortage that has affected Enterprise to where the government cannot get new vehicles. So they need to take 500 and I think $530,000 out of the uh, general fund and put it back into their maintenance for their fleet because they cannot get these brand new vehicles. So they need to maintain cars that they currently have that they're leasing through Enterprise. Um, there's a lot of speculations going on with that, very critical, a lot of people are, um, of how the government handles their transportation. Uh, I'm still looking into it, but that's all that I know for now. And that is a lot, that's the big bulk of everything that's going on on the council side for last week. Um, regarding the leasing, I. I mean, most consumers know that leasing uh, lowers your upfront costs. Yeah. But that, you know, if you go in and put 150,000 miles on the car, you're, you're, uh, you're going to pay for that. And, yeah. And uh, so I don't know. I guess yeah, when it's a different situation municipally, I suppose. Yeah, because they have eight hundred thousand dollars. I talked about this before. They have eight no eight million dollars set aside in the fund balance of that forty four million unassigned X Y and Z. Right. You know, they have eight million of that um, is set aside for if they need to buy out the leases with Enterprise at any point, right? Um, when I talked to the government, they assured me that this is all you know that, that leasing the vehicles is the best use of taxpayer dollars. Um, obviously, with the supply chain, you know, nobody can say what's right or wrong there's a lot of intricacies to it but it's a lot of money that we're seeing for transportation right well presumably that the supply chain thing isn't going to matter whether you're buying or leasing i mean cars are exactly. either available or they're not yeah but right now it's starting to affect them because now they have to pay for maintenance rather than just get new cars right. so there's a little bit of last it's it's as i said a lot of intricacies go into this yeah so uh you reported on um the uh uh, graduation rates. Oh yeah. Um, the uh, apparently we're you know compared to the state and and statewide comparisons are a little hard to extract from the report card. 
but um, at least in this case, it shows that we are uh, Cecil County is somewhat ahead of of the state. But, yeah. But there are certainly some variations among our high schools. Uh, yeah. The uh, care to elaborate? Yeah. So the biggest thing that I learned, um, you know, as I said, the school board beat is a bit of a new beat for myself, um, but I'm, you know, doing the best I can to learn it. And so we're, from what I understand, talking to the associate superintendent, Jenny Hammer and Dr. Foy, um, is that the graduation rates are based off of the population of the school, right? Um, the school population, if that differs, obviously a 90%, if the school population rate increases, right? And then the graduation rate goes up to 90%, that means that they have more kids graduating. Now, if their population were to decline and then they are, their numbers went up, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different numbers that play into these, but they assured me that, you know, the drop that Cecil County saw from 2021 to now, which is from 91% to 89.6% or something like that, isn't a huge drop, right? The drop that they've seen in graduation rates due to COVID is what they're telling me. Um, it, they're closer in numbers than they are with the state, right? They have 3% more of a higher graduation rate than the state does. Um, for all five public high schools in Cecil County, and Rising Sun was the only one to see an increase in graduation rates. Uh, it wasn't increased by a ton, but you know, there's three of the five schools have um, graduation rates above 90%. And so, you know, they, they said they're rebuilding, they're gonna get back to normal now that they're back in person. Uh, COVID is just having lasting effects on the school system and they made that very clear. Yes, um, good. Um, I hope we get to see more or get uh, some more interpreted interpreted data from the mm. report card as we go forward yeah. um so next week budget hearings begin oh yeah um what i haven't seen and i i should have actually asked you off line here but mm. well your answer will inform people uh is there a published schedule of, for example, uh, the beginning of uh, April 4th is the first mm -hmm. hearing. Who's up first? So when I it comes to a published schedule, um, the WIG, myself, uh, I've taken a lot of the information that I get. I've talked to county officials and I've said, look, what are the important dates? I got them. And they're in almost every single article that I've written about the budget at the bottom. You'll see X, Y, and Z. Here's the dates. Um, as for the actual published dates, I'm not too sure. I've always taken it upon myself to make sure that I incorporate the important dates associated with the budget in my articles. Um, so I haven't had the need to go online to figure that out. Um, but that is something that I can figure out and I can make available. Um, I know that on the county website, they kind of broadcast like on the homepage, like, oh, this event's coming up or, you know, the state of the county is this time, at this area, you know? So uh, I guarantee you'd be on there, but as much notice as they might give, who's to say? Right. I went looking. I did not find uh, who, you know, the order of the hearings. No. They, uh, yeah. So the yeah. live, you know, the highlights are usually the school system, the police, the library, et cetera. And then you work your way down. Uh, they're all important. Um, so, hmm. um, okay, well, that's all I have. Uh, it's not bad to keep these things relatively uh, succinct. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I guess uh, we'll uh, do this again next week. Yeah, absolutely. And I have one more thing to add, if you wouldn't Certainly. mind. Um, on the wigs, you know, peripheral, what we're what we're aiming for right now, what I'm working on is um, getting a FOIA request, freedom of information request from the Seas County government. Today is the deadline, uh, the 30 day deadline, not including weekends to see how they spent their ARPA money. I've not received anything yet. Um, so come Monday, we will regroup on that but there will be a report from the wig 
coming out about how the county spent their ARPA money. That's excellent. Look forward to that. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. I'm excited. Yes. <laughs> so. All right. All right, Matt. We'll see you next week. And thanks a lot. It's absolutely. Thanks, Doug. Matt Hubbard from the Cecil Wig. And again, I'm Doug Donnelly from Cecil TV. Thank you very much for watching and see you next week.